everyone, Nikki Niverson here, conservation educator here at the Slato Wildlife Education Center. Thank you for tuning in. We're just gonna give a couple minutes so everyone can join us. But right now we're gonna talk a little bit about the agency and what we do. So if you've ever seen us, we are run by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. Um, we get our funding through the sale of hunting and fishing licenses and voter registrations and things like that. So if you have a hunting and fishing license, thank you so much. You help fund what we do here at the Salado Center and all the videos you've been able to see the last couple of days. What we're going to talk about now, we're going to do a little bit of native versus non-native wildlife. So here at the center, we only have native wildlife, meaning that it is from Kentucky or it is in Kentucky. So we don't, we're not going to talk about lions or tigers, but we are today going to talk about bears because we do have bears in the state of Kentucky. What I want to do is introduce you to my friend. This is our little roly bear that we're going to use as a demonstration today. So, like I said, what I want you to do now, we talked about native and non-native wildlife, but now we're gonna talk a little bit about a group of animals. So what I want you to do, take your thumb for me and put it back here. Tell me what you feel. If you said spine or backbone, you were absolutely correct. There's a group of animals, so there's five different groups in this section called vertebrates. And so bears are in vertebrates. So they are part of the mammal group. We have the kestrel, which if you saw the bird or raptor program the other day, you saw these guys. These birds are vertebrates as well. We talked about fish. We also talked about snakes, which are reptiles. And then we have amphibians like this spotted salamander here. So vertebrates are really important. Now, since we are talking about bears, they are mammals and we have characteristics that make mammals mammals. So mammals have hair or fur. So we people, we have hair. Bears here, they have fur. We give birth to live young. We feed our babies with milk and we are warm blooded. And so if you don't know what warm blooded means, warm blooded means we get to regulate our own body temperature. We don't have to worry about what it, the temperature is outside of our conditions here. So we are always 97 point whatever our degrees are. We're always the same all the time. So that's what warm blooded means. That's what makes mammals mammals. And that's what makes a, a bear a bear. So what we're going to talk about now, how many bear species do we have in the whole world? There are eight species. We do have some subspecies of certain things, but we do have eight species. So we have the Asiatic black bear, which you can find in Asia. We've got the sun bear and the sun bear, they have this nice orange spot around their neck. That's what makes them. That's what gives them their name. We have the sloth bear. He's really fuzzy. We have the spectacle bear, which you can find in the Andes Mountains in South America. We also have the giant panda bear. Now those guys are what we call flagship species. They help with conservation. So if you want to know more about conservation, those types of animals, kind of like the monarch butterfly, they help with that. We also have, so these last three that we're gonna talk about, they, you can find these guys in North America. So we have the polar bear, which you can find up in the top portion of Canada and Alaska. We have the brown bear. These guys are also known as grizzly bears or Kodiak bears, depending on where you're from. And then my absolute favorite, the American black bear. And these are the ones we're gonna talk about today because those are the ones we have in the state of Kentucky. So a little bit of history for you about our Kentucky black bears. In the early 1900s, our population of black bears declined almost to extinction, but not quite. And the reason why was because due to habitat loss and fragmentation from the overcutting of hardwood mature forests, as you can see in this picture here, along with overhunting because people did not follow the hunting regulations and the lack of having a protected area for these bears to go when they needed somewhere to stay safe. But amazingly enough, over the last 20 years, our bear populations have increased and they are actually a great conservation story in general because these are the most, most regulated and most abundant bear species in the, in the world, not just Kentucky. Because our habitats have gone back to what they once were being nice, mature hardwood forests. So because of our 
regulation of over harvesting of timber woods and things like that and making sure people follow hunting and fishing regulations we are able to now have bears back in the state of Kentucky but one thing that I hear a lot of people ask did we restock bears so a lot of people think that we restocked black bears in the state of Kentucky that's actually false our habitats became so good again that bears moved in from our neighboring states so Tennessee Virginia and West Virginia they finally Kentucky became a habitable place again and they finally came back and made their own populations so what we're going to do now we're going to talk about our habitats so you can find black bears in hard mature wood forests or habitats like that with shrubs and trees along that gives them plenty of spaces to find shelter along with food and things like that now my friends who live in eastern Kentucky right here in the dark green you are in the core bear range so you guys probably have to deal with bears on a daily basis the other guys in eastern Kentucky in the light green those are resident bear ranges so you would see bears quite often as well in the gray area those are isolated sightings that you might possibly see a bear so in the summertime our juvenile males will mosey out of the resident and core bear ranges to find food and shelter and mate possibly so as you can see here this is a map from 2018 the sightings so in the yellow and in the orange those are the sightings that we had in the isolated areas so if you live in these kind of counties you may possibly be able to see a black bear during the summertime when these bears are moseying out but they will always go back into the resident and core bear ranges so don't worry you'll be fine I promise if you do happen to see a bear in this area or in your area please let us know so we can put it in on these maps like this so we can understand and get data of where all these bears are going and moving and migrating so we can gather the plenty of data that we need being well rounded so when I mean being well rounded we're going to talk about their food for a little bit so black bears are considered to be opportunistic omnivores so when I mean omnivores I'm talking they eat both plant and animal material so you have the canine teeth that you can see those are to tear meat like fish or deer but then they also have these flat teeth here that's for their plant material that they love to eat and depending on what time of year it is that determines what they're eating so right now when they're starting to wake up they're starting to get back out there in the springtime they eat mostly plant material so you can see right here in this top picture he's eating a dandelion they eat all kinds of plant materials and that's totally fine um, they also so in the summertime they will eat berries and other plant materials so it just kind of depends and bugs they love to eat insects in the summertime so grubs and worms and things like that they'll flip rocks and just kind of figure out what they want to eat and then in the fall they will eat nuts and more berries now they also eat like I said they're opportunistic omnivores meaning they'll eat what they can find so they eat carry-on and that is dead material so they can eat a dead deer on the side of the road if they find it or a fish if it's easier for them to get the food that's what they're going to choose over trying to search for miles to find their food or try to catch the fish in the stream just kind of depends if it's easier they're going to take the easy way out they're kind of lazy that way but that's okay now what I want you to do is on your screen I I would like to talk about characteristics so please put in the comments below what you think what kind of colors come in black bears so but our biggest bear in the state of Kentucky is three minutes. Go back three minutes. The biggest bear in the state of Kentucky is about 550 pounds in the wild. So it just kind of depends where you're at. All right. How long do they hibernate, Ben, age 11? So in the state of Kentucky, our bears can hibernate for several months at a time so it just depends like I said it's dealing with the equator so depending on the light cue the food source cue and the temperature cue so in Kentucky it's a little different because sometimes it's not very cold in the winter 
and there's usually food around, but they can sleep up to anywhere from three to six months without needing any water or food materials like that. So those are some really great questions that you guys are asking. This is awesome. So what we're gonna talk about now is bear biologists. So in the state, we have a bear biologist. His name is John Hatt. So if you ever have any bear questions, feel free to email him. He'd be happy to answer your questions. But bear biologists, we do all kind, they do all kinds of different things. So these are some pictures that I collected when I worked in Louisiana on the bear crew down there. But as you can see in this picture right here, Cliff is you know taking some data. So checking teeth, putting ear tags in, and radio collars. Sometimes the radio collars in the top picture right here look really large, and that's okay. That just depends on where you're at or what our bear biologists have to use. Sometimes you'll see radio collars like this. Sometimes they're different colors or skinnier or bigger, depending on where you're at, and that's fine. But these radio collars help us collect data. So when I talked about earlier, collecting data of migration patterns or where they're moving or if the core population, if that map is changing, if we're getting more and more bears, along with if they're moving further into different areas or habitats. That helps us collect this data and they get sent back to us via radio signals. So radio collars are pretty neat. But as you can see, a couple of them, they get to go and check in dens. And as you can see, they're in a bear den right here. It's kind of in the, the bottom of this tree and you can see that radio collar and you can also see those ear tags. So they get to do all kinds of fun stuff. A couple fun facts that we're gonna talk about real fast. A lot of questions get asked of, if I see a bear, should I run away? The answer is no, because bears can run up to 35 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. I don't know how fast the Olympic runners can run, but I don't think it's 35 miles an hour. Another one is, should I climb a tree? No because bears, they're excellent climbers. They have these awesome claws and they can climb. They can climb 100 feet in a tree within 30 seconds. So you try thinking, okay, 100 feet, can I climb that? No, you probably couldn't even climb it within a minute. So bears are very, very agile when it comes to speed and climbing things. One of my favorite facts that I love to use is about their snouts. And so bears, they have these big snouts and they can smell a cheeseburger from a mile away. So if you ever know, realize like you're camping, make sure that you keep your food up because they can smell. They have smelled seven, seven times better than a hound dog or a bloodhound that's used to look for lost people. So maybe we should have rescue bears, I'm not sure. That's probably not an option, but that would be kind of cool. Cubs, so if you look right here, cubs are really, really small. They only weigh between a half a pound and three-fourths of a pound when they're born. They're very, very tiny, and they're really cool. But cubs will stay with their moms for a year to a year and a half to learn all the essentials, and then they're out on their own. So you got to think, we don't do that to our babies, but we're a little different. So, And then the largest bear in the United States was 880 pounds in North Carolina, which is really interesting. So like I said, bears, depending on where you're at or what they're eating, they can be fairly large. So if you ever come out to the Salado Center, you know we have a black bear, he's really cool. As of right now, he weighs about 675 pounds. So, but he is in captivity, so they have a little bit different rules. Then we've got a couple awesome more pictures of our biologists going out and doing den work, getting to play with the babies. We've got a bear up here. He just woke up from a very long nap and he realized I've been abducted by aliens probably because now I have jewelry all over me. And he looked a little dazed and confused, but he's unharmed. And then we have a picture of our awesome bear here at Toledo. And we do enrichments and things like that to keep him engaged. And so. When the center opens back up, hopefully you guys can come out to Salado and see some of these enrichments and trainings that we do with him. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little field trip and we're gonna talk about how to be bear aware in bear country. So if you wanna follow me and we're gonna do a little tiny field trip, it's gonna be really great. 
Do we have any questions? You can read them out loud if you want. Aubrey Kent wants to know, why do people hunt black bears? Why do people hunt black bears? So that's an amazing question. So depending on what the seasons are. So we have the deer season. We also have a quail and elk season. We've got spring turkey hunting season coming up very soon. So bears are in the same thing. The population is so good that we can have a hunting season on them, but it's a quota hunt as of right now. So you have to call in every time, every evening to the, the specific number to make sure if the quota has been met or not. And you also have to have your permit. That's $30 and you can get it on our website at fw.ky.gov. So really great question, but that's the reason why we have hunting. We wanna make sure that our population stay regulated, but we have enough to make sure nothing goes extinct. So what we're gonna do now if you're just tuning in and you didn't get to see the core range map, we've got one right here. If you're in this dark green, you are in the core bear population. If you're in this lighter green, you are in the resident population, meaning you will see a lot of bears. And then this area right here, those are where you can see isolated sightings. So depending on what time of year it is, especially summertime, our juvenile males, they'll start moseying into these areas to find foods and a domain and a mate little girlfriend probably. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna talk about being bear aware. So if you ever come to the Salado Center, you will see this amazing bear aware exhibit and you get to see how you measure up to our bear right here. I'm not that tall, so maybe if I stand up a little taller, I'm not sure, it might work. But being bear aware, you gotta make sure if you're in this area where bears are common, if you live in this area or if you're visiting, you need to make sure you know some rules. So the first one is stop. You want to make sure that you give a bear plenty of space. Don't go up to a bear. That's why they make zoom on cameras, guys. We want to make you make sure that you are safe. So give the bear its space and he'll leave you alone. Also, you want to make sure that you don't feed bears. It's actually illegal to feed a bear. And the reason why is because if a bear gets used to humans, it could create a conflict. Now we've never had a human bear fatality in the state of Kentucky, and we do like to keep it that way. So these are in place to keep not only you safe, but the bear safe as well. So give a bear space, take pictures from afar, and you're fine. Second one, you wanna make sure that you lock up your garbage, your pet food, and if you're camping, make sure your stuff is in a bear safe container. So if you're camping in the Red River Gorge area, the garbage cans, and the campsites will have these bear safe containers or bear proof containers where the bears can't get in to the stuff and create a conflict with you and a bear. Bird food. So if my friends that live in eastern Kentucky with the bears, make sure dur during this time when bears are starting to finally come out and start moseying around, make sure that you put your bird seed up, especially at nighttime. You want to make sure that all your items are up so it doesn't attract bears into your home. Same with your pet food. You wanna make sure that your pet food is put away because bears love different pet foods. They love the bird seed. It's just an attractant. And they, if they start eating it, they're gonna to wanna to eat it more. So you wanna make sure that you stay safe and put all your things away like you're supposed to. Also, especially in the summertime, I love to grill out and I know a lot of you guys at home probably do as well. So you wanna make sure that you clean your grills and store them because if you don't clean them, that smell of the cheeseburger that you cooked or the steak is going to attract that bear. Remember, I said that bears can smell up to a mile away. So if they're hungry and they smell that steak, even though you're not cooking anything, they might want to come in and try to examine your grill to see if there's any sort of food that they can use or eat. And then last but not least, being bear aware, if you see a bear, notify your neighbor so they know what's going on. Don't just keep it to yourself. That's a way to make, every, make sure everyone stays safe at the same time. So we're going to have a couple minutes to answer some quick questions. Okay, Luke, age eight. How tall can a black bear get? So it depends. This guy right here is pushing like the seven foot mark. So they can get relatively large. Um, the taller they are, the bigger they are too. So weight and height kind of go, go hand in hand. 
Lori, what is your favorite thing about a black bear? Hmm. Black bears are my absolute favorite animal. So my favorite thing is they look adorable. Now, I know better. I'm not going to go out and try to go and get really close to a black bear. That's not a safe thing to do. But I love to go out and see if I can see them and take some photos. So they are really cool. And they're just kind of like my spirit animal. I have the same tendencies. I would love to hibernate if I could, and I eat all the junk food. So it just kind of depends. And then last one, were the bears on the photos from Louisiana sleeping or immobilized when being measured? So we put them to sleep. So we immobilize them, essentially, um, so we can collect the data. So during those photos, we put them to sleep with a dart, pretty much. They came into a culvert trap. We darted them, put it, waited a little bit, put them to sleep. And then when we pulled them out, we got a weight on the bear. And then we drew blood, looked at his teeth, gave him a mouth tattoo. So if you ever notice those photos, if you go back after this video and see there's a lot of blue dye on his mouth, that's why we gave him a mouth tattoo. We gave him a radio collar and some ear tags. So he was completely decked out when we got done. So, well, thank you guys so much for joining me today and learning all about black bears. Make sure to join in tomorrow to see Lori talk about Kentucky Bobcats. Thank you so much.